is the consent agenda. Move for approval. Move for approval. Second. 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 All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Next agenda item will be, these are action items, and it is the approval criteria, bus surveillance system enhancement staff report 13-047. I will turn it to Lynn Halsey. We want to give them a moment to clear the room. Oh, you yeah. want to? Yeah. Okay, we'll take a uh, couple minutes to allow the room to be cleared. Thank you. Okay. I didn't see that. Oh, okay. Hey. I didn't see that. Okay, okay Bob, Bob. Here we go. You want, let's just give a couple minutes here for people to clear. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Bob. I'll uh, direct your attention to pages 60 and 61 of your uh, board packet. <clears throat> As the, um, the, the proposal for the uh, bus surveillance camera equipment and the um, criteria that we are going to use for responders, we're asking the board tonight to um, uh, approve the rating criteria for the responders to the request for proposals for the bus for surveillance camera enhancement program. And uh, and that's that's it. Okay. Any questions from the uh, from the directors to the staff concerning bus surveillance? You need a board. We action? need a motion. Yes, to uh, approve I, this. I move to approve uh, the rating uh, criteria. Uh, report thirteen uh, zero four seven bus surveillance okay. system. Councilmember Smith. <clears throat> Do we have second. a second? Second by Mayor Levitt. Discussion. Okay. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Thank you. We we'll get that Excuse process me, I going. Abstain. Oh, what's that? Oh, I abstain. And uh, Commissioner Medor abstains from this vote. Okay. All right. Next is another action item. This is the Labor Agreement International Association of Machinists and Aerospace Workers Local 1435, District 24, Staff Report 1348. And I will turn this to Julie yes. for a report. Okay. Yes. As you know, I've come before you the last uh, couple months in executive session to bring you up to speed on where we're at with the machinist union and labor negotiations. And uh, we did reach a tentative agreement on August 19th for that group. And it was uh, ratified by membership on September 20th with uh, what I understand a lot of support from the membership. So we're here today to ask the board to ratify the contract. And <coughs> Questions from the uh, Board of Directors to staff? Okay. Um, yes, yes, I have a question. Commissioner Mordor? Uh, I'd actually like to make a motion that we uh, place the contract on the website as part of our transparency and open government. That's a motion. Okay. Uh, second. 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 Yeah. I'm fine with that. Yeah. For the record, it'll be on the ATU website. Okay. It's so just a question. If that's not common practice, it seems like something, yeah, as long as it's a public record, that's, that's yeah, something we're doing at the county um, level to I make sure that we have it. as much information as possible on our website. So is it, are these not already going onto our, uh, the C-Trans website? I'm not sure if they're currently on C-Trans website, but that's certainly, certainly something that we can do. Good. Um, of course, we have to wait until it's completely ratified before we can do that. Sure. And it would be on the ATU. Yeah, Good. Yeah. So all, to put this on the website, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Approved. So we'll get that posted on the, on the website. Okay. Oh, we're not we done yet. A, okay. Yeah. Um, oh. <laughs> so I'll move to uh, approve of the labor agreement. Okay. Second. Second. Discussion. Nice job. Yeah, yeah, I was no, uh, contract negotiations can at times be challenging, but uh, mm -hmm. glad to see that we reached agreement. Okay. Machinist Union is a good group to work with. Okay. Yeah. Thank okay. You. okay, we have a motion and a second. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Mr. Chairman, I abstain. And Commissioner Mador abstains. Aye. Motion passes. So, labor agreements passed. Next comes the high capacity transit. Fourth plane bus rapid transit, and this is going to, is this the result? Uh, Commissioner Medor, I will turn it to you. Yes, and I 
do have several resolutions. And I'm going to make sure I get the right one here. Do we have copies of these? Do we? I, think I don't have them out. You're handing them out? Isn't it in the packet? I don't see it. No, Is I it? asked for copies in our it packets, but they packet. weren't. It's yeah, not in the packet. The, the, uh, I'll tell you what it is. Yeah. We're just getting there. I won't say anything. These are gone. I'd like to get these out as soon as I can. Uh, it's been a hectic time, so this is the best I can do. So move to consider any rev resolutions from Commissioner Medora that we are just receiving to the next meeting, please. Second. Second. Yeah. And then put them on the agenda so that we actually have it and then we can have transparency and have them uh, provided to the citizens. Mr. Chairman? Yes. I would think that we would be consistent with the practice that we did last time. Mr. Wiffendale passed out a, the resolution to sign the agreement. Uh, and none of us had an opportunity to read that agreement before it was voted on. Yeah, we had a Why would we do it different now? That came at the last second. We still have a motion and a second a on the motion floor. Motion and a second. Okay. All those, okay, let me get this clear. It was motion to table this resolution to no, the No, no, it was postpone, postpone uh, action to the next meeting and placing these on the agenda for discussion and so that they have adequate uh, opportunity to be published. Question. Um, what do you yes. Do you have? Uh, is this the only one, or do you have like four, five, ten? We have. I have three resolutions. This is the first one. Right. And I move for and all of the three resolutions be moved to that meeting. Second. So, okay. That was Commissioner already Stewart. Done. Second by Councilmember Smith. Discussion. Commissioner Medora. Yes. Uh, this notice that this resolution is to consider the vote, which is for us basically to uh, pause spending local funds until the vote. If we wait till after the vote, uh, then we will have uh, violated the intent for this resolution. Okay. Point of order. Commissioner Stewart, what's the point of order? Aren't we talking about uh, postponing and not the actual amendment? Yes, so shouldn't discussion then be on the postponement of it? I think, he, I think Mr. Commissioner Medora did speak of the urgency in Close his enough. view. Okay. why he has to vote on it now and not at the next meeting. So I think it is, is, is okay. Commissioner Stewart. Or, no, no, nothing. Okay. So, any other discussion? Uh, Council member? Yeah, I'd like Bring us it. to discuss this tonight. Um, been sitting on this board for a year and 10 months, and the entire time we've promised the people a vote. A number of you that I've been sitting on this board with have been promising the people a vote. We just want to make a resolution that we will give the people a vote. Mm -hmm. And I don't see any reason. This is not exactly complicated. I think we're very capable people to read this, discuss it, and vote on it. Mm -hmm. I don't see why we need to postpone these resolutions. We have time. 7.05. This is it's early. Just a, mm -hmm. Okay, but we have a motion on the uh, I, Mm -hmm. No, but there is a motion on the floor. I'm trying to follow my Robert's rules here. Do you um, have a second? Any further discussion? We, we, we had a second, right? Yes. Okay. I've got a question, and it's just a point of order. If it's so important, why is one of the commissioners missing? You'll have well, to ask. Well, actually, earlier, Tom. He didn't, he didn't ask himself. I, that's, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's a fair question. Tom expressed to me that he was in pain. His back is bothering him. So he had to go home early. He didn't have any medication. Okay. Okay. So uh, that's pr private. Okay, so uh, all those in favor of the motion? Um, to, actually, oh, discussion oh, first. Discussion. Okay, um, I'd like to at least read the first um, line. Why are we considering this? It's a resolution to welcome, consider, and courteously regard the vote of the people in the November 2013 Clark County Advisory election on bus rapid transit. That's what this is. Okay. All right. All those in favor of the motion to table to the next meeting? I'm table to postpone. To postpone until the next. Till after the election. I, to the November meeting. Okay, to the November meeting, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. 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 Resolution fails. Excuse me? Roll call. Roll call, excuse me. Passes. Passes. Okay, we'll do a roll call. <laughs> Just that I made a mistake. <laughs> nice try. Joe Freeman? Nay. Jeannie Harris? Aye. Tim, uh, Jim Irish? Yes. Tim Levitt? Yes. David Medor? Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. 
what was the uh, this motion was to postpone to postpone to the, certainly not till after the election here enough uh, larry smith yes steve stewart yes Ch chair ganley no and the motion passes and these th the three uh, uh resolutions have been oh, sorry. postponed oh. to the november meeting mm -hmm. okay all right next is uh and we have no items from the consent agenda. Communications from the chair. I just want to thank everyone tonight. It was uh, well, excuse me. Um, I, I missed that. I, I mentioned three? I had three resolutions. Right, and yeah. they all we, got postponed. Postponed. Are these all three, or is this no, the, the one? How can you postpone? They don't even know what they are. I made a motion they to postpone motion. the three resolutions that you brought, That's, and it passed. It passed. Uh, We're moving on. To what? To, to it is, it, the motion was, they made a motion to postpone, and, and it's going to come from the chair, then we have comments from the board. Uh, which you'll it's, have it's, from it's the chair. point of order. Okay. I'm on the agenda to be able to discuss this issue. I'd like to be able to uh, discuss this issue. Okay. Mr. Wolfendale? Yes, I think Commissioner Medor makes a correct and fair point that each resolution should be brought on, okay. and then whatever action to be taken by the board. Action for each uh, resolution? Correct. Okay. So there was a motion, Tom, to table all three. So that was incorrect. So it was just the one? The table. Well, I, or postpone. I, I think under the circumstances that the first motion can be taken as having postponed depth to the next meeting, the first resolution that was under consideration at that point, unless uh, Commissioner Medor wishes to have that resolution, or excuse me, that motion withdrawn and a totally separate vote on his first resolution. Otherwise, I think Commissioner Medor is correct that his next, I guess it's two more resolutions, should each be considered separately. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, like them each to be considered. advice, uh, unless you will to post on the. So, the vote was already time. taken, so how do I withdraw a motion and then remake a motion? That passed. Uh, motion for reconsideration? Yeah. Let's, okay. Let's do it that way. Uh, I would move for a reconsideration of the prior vote taken by this board. Second. Okay. Second. Was that Mr. Thank you. Or Mr. Levitt, sorry. Mr. Levitt. Okay. Mayor Levitt. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. It's to so. reconsiderate the motion. That Mr. Chair, that yes. Against you. Yeah. Mr. Stewart. Mr. Chair, I move that we postpone action on the board resolution uh, titled uh, first line being a resolution to welcome, consider, and courteously regard the vote of the people uh, to the November uh, CTRAN board meeting, giving opportunity for it to be published and uh, provide transparency to the citizens as has been requested. Second. Second by Mayor Levitt. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. 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 Motion passes. Resolution table. Okay. Second uh, resolution. Postponed. Yes. The, the uh, other resolution I passed out has actually been passed by this board. I didn't see it. I haven't it didn't seen get it. passed out. Passed out. Yeah. How did it go? What was the number? Oh, I got. I saw he's got it. Oh, he's got it. <laughs> okay. Is that eight zero one nine? On it's um, board resolution. BR 08019, and you'll notice on page three there's there's some highlighting. It's basically the commitment that this board made as a condition of approval for the LP the CRC light rail tolling project. This is under the section high capacity or HCT financing. Uh, item E2 says any means chosen to finance operation of the HCT component of the CRC project shall be submitted to impacted C-TRAN voters for approval. And the next line says, uh, under three, initiation of HCT service in Clark County uh, should provide a net service benefit to in, uh, existing C-TRAN patrons without diverting existing revenues from C-TRAN's current operating and capital costs. Um, and uh, under section E, it says, sustainer, under the heading sustainability, Highway bridge and HCT design and construction should reflect principles of sustainability, cost efficiency, context sensitivity, and avoid and minimize adverse impacts. And I, this is, I'm, I'm at this point, I'm not going to ask the, the, the board to vote on this resolution. I, I'm, I'm asking 
if uh, this board is aware of this resolution and does this mean anything? They might want to give us some explanation of what you're thinking. Does our word mean anything? Can I ask a quick okay, question? And, and, and it's, a, it's, it's a question. Yes. Are, are these uh, resolutions coming from the board or are they coming from you as an individual? They're coming from me as a board member. Okay, so the rest of the board members like Commissioner Milky and, and obviously uh, Commissioner Stewart have not seen these and, until you brought them out this evening? Not since the last time they voted on them. It is as a C-TRAN board member. Okay. Yeah, there's no, no vote on this I have one. What's the next no one? No explanation? Okay. Anybody? Any other questions? Okay. All right. Okay. See, before I hand out the other resolution, I'd I like to be able to just simply um, ask a few questions. Okay. Because I, I want to make sure that we understand that we're following process and what we're doing is legal. First of all, uh, I as a board member was not aware that there was, there was the, uh, a contract existing ready to sign the next morning uh, at our September 26 special meeting to consider that project. I'd like to be able to hear from our, our legal counsel. Um, did you have that contract in your possession the, that, that evening? And if so, why didn't you reveal that to the board? Well, the contract was here that evening. Its existence was revealed to the board. Mr. Ham mentioned it at least twice and held it up during his presentation along with the resolution. Did any member of this board actually see that contract before you signed it? Before I, I signed it as yes. approved to form? Before you signed that contract. Your name is on the contract the next morning. Yes, uh, correct, as approved to form. So the question is, did any of the board members see that contract before it was signed? I don't know. Well, can I ask if any board member here saw that contract before it was signed? I did not see that contract. So I assume if you don't say that you saw it, that you didn't see it. Is that right? Okay. Did any, um, there is a $5 million uh, liquidated damages that says it's not a penalty. Um, was any board member aware of that um, before it was signed? I don't know. Um, did you reveal it to any? Mr. Any? Chair, point of order. Okay. Well, the point of order is that there is this a resolution or is this? The no, question? this there is, is no resolution before us, and on the agenda it is speaking specifically to resolutions. Uh, if we're rehashing a previous votes, you can either do it under the from the board section uh, or raise a resolution. But uh, this line of inquiry is uh, out of order. Um, Mr. Chairman, yes. I'll assert that this line of inquiry is exactly in order, and this is exactly the kind of dialogue that we should be having, deliberation and at least discovery to de determine the face of CTRAN is about to change. If this goes through, we ought to at least figure out uh, at the basics of how that happened. Okay. I've got a, uh, s some important questions here because we're accountable to the people. And one of those is, is there any provision at all built into that contract that would allow us to repeal it without suffering a $5 million liquidated damages claim? Commissioner Medora, I yeah. think what he's saying, you're going to come under right. from the board. I just think he's, and we're going to come up to that quickly. In other words, I will have an opportunity yes, to ask these will. questions shortly. Yes. I'll uh, patiently wait. Okay. So we're going to go, there was no items from the consent agenda here. Well, actually, I do have a resolution, so I'll, let's stay on, on target here. Okay. So, oh, yeah. Any more resolutions? Because that's, that's what they're saying under the uh, point of order is that it has to be a resolution. And yes. then from the board, you can say whatever you want. Yep. Okay. While well, that's being passed around, this is a board resolution recognizing CTRAN's board exclusive and non-delegatable authority to set policy. And uh, I'd like to read through the whereas is on here because each one of those things I think are, are foundational to how we are operating as a board. So whereas the CTRAN board adopted a fundamental policy as a good faith commitment to the people that requires any means of funding CRC light rail operation and maintenance costs to be first authorized by a vote of the people. Whereas that commitment to the people was made official policy by the two CRC project sponsors that represented, represent the citizens of Clark County, RTC and CTRAN. 
when both organizations adopted that policy as a condition of approval, made it a requirement to be satisfied and incorporated into that re incorporated that requirement into the CRC locally preferred alternative. And whereas that adopted policy also expressly prohibits the use of any CTRAN revenues from being diverted to fund light rail, and whereas CTRAN adopted policy number PBD-015 uh, expressly prohibits the use of any of the current voter approved 0.7% uh, sales tax CTRAM revenues from being used for any aspect of the CRC project. And that policy is still on our website, the, C, the uh, uh, CTRAN website. Whereas the CTRAN board placed Proposition 1 on the November 2012 ballot as a means to fund high capacity transit, including light rail and bus rapid transit. And whereas the majority of citizens in that election rejected that ballot measure, whereas the voters have not authorized any other means to fund high capacity transit, and whereas none of these adopted policies have been rescinded, whereas the board cannot lawfully delegate their exclusive policy making authority to others not accountable to the people by allowing others to negotiate and execute contracts that establish new policies that contradict adopted CTRAN po board policies and break good faith commitments made to the people by the CTRAN board or that violate the condition of approval adopted by CTRAN or RTC as incorporated into the LPA. Whereas the CTRAN board has been made aware that since the special board meeting on September 26 that the CTRAN CEO Jeff Hamm on September 27 in error signed a contract with TriMet in conflict in, and or with adopted CTRAN in conflict with adopted CTRAN policies that would establish new policies in conflict with adopted CTRAN pol uh, board policies without the prior knowledge, review, or approval of the CTRAN board and without the legal authority to do so. Whereas the terms of that contract are unacceptable, unlawful, unconstitutional, and incapable, or I'm sorry, in incompatible with the CTRAN adopted 20 year plan, and whereas an example of a new unacceptable and unconstitutional CTRAN policy not authorized by the CTRAN board in that contract sets up Portland TriMet as a sole and full authority to order CTRAN to use its eminent domain powers to condemn and transfer private property to TriMet at the sole discretion of TriMet and with no possibility of waiver under the threat of $5 million in liquidated damages uh, for non-performance and uh, nullif nullifies a citizen's right to petition their government for redress of grievances. And the idea behind that is that if we as an elected body don't have a legal means uh, left to us to be able to allow people to ap appeal and grant them relief, then we have violated their constitutional rights because we just have, we've become a puppet of a out of state agency not accountable to the people. Whereas another example of new unacceptable CTRAN policy not authorized by the CTRAN board in that contract allows Portland TriMet to lay claim to future CTRAN tax increases regardless of the statutory provisions under which the additional tax is approved. Now therefore, be it ordered, resolved, and decreed by the CTRAN board as follows. Section one, findings. In support of the action enacted by this resolution, the CTRAN board adopts its findings uh, the recital set forth above. Section two, the CTRAN board on this eighth day of October 2013 recognizes that TriMet, the TriMet contract is hereby repealed, terminated, and deemed null and void. Notice is to be immediately given to convey the, that, uh, the, the contract status to TriMet. Now, much of this rests on the delegation of policy making authority by this board to staff. And so I'll ask uh, our legal counsel, is that legal? Yes. In other That's words, what, uh, we can I, I'm, we I'm we just simply can let the staff run this this and set policy. It wasn't setting the policy, Commissioner Medora, that resulted in CEO Ham signing the contract. It was the resolution that delegated the authority to sign a contract with TriMet that was the subject of the resolution last Thursday. 
we have standing policy that that contract contradicts. Clearly, I read through it. It's still standing policy that's posted on CTRAN's website that says none of the 0.7% sales and use tax shall be used for any aspect of the CRC project. That contract violates that policy. How can this board delegate to staff the reversal of a policy? Is that legal? Well, I, if I'm understanding your question correctly and this resolution, that statement is incorrect because the seven tenths that currently exists includes the originating tax that was passed and approved when the agency was formed. There were no restrictions with regard to the utilization of that, of those funds. I, I think, sir, you're misquoting what these, that the very simple policy that's posted on the website, it says no amount of that 0.7%, which is basically all of the funding for CTRAN, basically, um, shall be used for any aspect of the CRC project. Um, um, that's not correct. Can somebody pull that up? In fact, if you want to navigate to it, we can just read it directly. It's very, very simple and very quick. It's under... What is it? If it says 1.7 percent will not be used, yeah. or the one tenth of one percent, or two tenths of one percent will not be used for light rail, that means the other five tenths of one percent can be correct. I I disagree, but okay. I saw that any if local I could, money kept for local buses, but thank you, that's Jeannie. how I voted for it. So that was my that's how it was not presented when I voted on it. Okay, here's I what the, that policy what your, What was your response, to, Chair? I couldn't hear you. Oh, no, that, uh, with Mr. Jennings that they were looking it up. When, I, when we went to the voters that the, that the local revenue would not be used for uh, high capacity transit at the time, because when we took this to the voters, there was two times we went to the voters, and one was in 2005 and the other one was in 2011. And they best definitely, we, as the board went forward, was not to use local sales tax dollars under that and I never say the RCW right, but that was supposed to be only used for local buses at that time. And that's what I thought it all encumbered that. So what's it okay. say? Okay, this is what it says. Uh, CTRAN funding, including the current voter approved 0.5% uh, sales tax revenue and the proposed 0.2% sales tax revenue, because this was approved before that actually got passed and it did pass. Should it be approved on the November 8, 2011 general election ballot or capital reserves, will not be used to fund any aspect of the CRC project. That's so, what that policy says. It's, I'm reading it from the so CTRAN website. That's 3% website. basically that cannot be used. It's 0. 0.5 and 0. 0.2, which so is the 0. 0.7 points, that currently so funds CTRAN. Right we're now. at 7, so the difference would be able to be used. Oh. It, uh, no, it's, it specifically calls out the 0.5% and then this 0.2%, add them together, it's 0.7%. And so the CTRAN policy is adopted, still posted on our website, says we can't use any of that revenue for the CTRAN or for the, any aspect of the CRC project. So since that's still a standing policy, the question is, the staff established does, did the staff establish a new policy in contradiction with this when they uh, negotiated and signed that contract without our knowledge? I'd have to say at this point, I don't know. Because my understanding, and Commissioner Medor, bear with me since I'm hearing this for the first time, that it was my understanding that in referencing the 2011 election, it was made clear that any increase in our sales tax percentage in that 2011 election would not be used for light rail. My recollection, and it could be flawed, was that any sales tax imposed before that period of time was always for general purposes of the agency. No. And That's I, the best answer I can give you at this point. I want to say, first of all, there was two votes, one in 2005. The first one failed in 2004. And I know because this issue came up, how to fund legal counsel 
to look into CRC. We could not touch that money. So what the money was used, was approved by the board, was to use money from the advertising on the buses that would go to legal counsel to help CTRAN staff and board make correct decisions on the, on the CRC. It came from the advertising money because we could not touch the, the sales tax money. And I know that was, you can look at the discussions using the advertising money. Advertising was a huge discussion too. That's just, I, yeah. I know that. I just, that came to me tonight. So if I'm wrong, let me know. Yeah. No, I remember that. Yeah. I was there. Yeah. No. Yeah. Mayor? Yeah, thank you. I guess uh, uh, that was my recollection was that uh, this, uh, the, the board, uh, had decided that the, any new tax revenues that voters approved would not be used uh, to support high capacity transit, specifically uh, light rail with this, the CRC. Uh, but we also did talk about advertising revenue, utilizing advertising revenue to support staff efforts. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I want to go to the broader question, Mr. Wolfendale, and that is, um, You've already opined to some extent on some of the previously adopted uh, policy that this board um, in years past has supported that it may actually not be um, really within our purview and it may have been, we have, may have been an error in adopting, in adopting certain aspects of, of some of our previous resolutions. Uh, I, I just want to ask, is it, um, is it inappropriate for for a board like this come years later to adopt new policy that that uh, overrides a previous policy, or do we should an action be taken to unravel a previous policy decision, or is it is it all right for a board uh, in a future date to adopt new policy that may somewhat contradict something that was previously adopted? Well, if the I guess uh, your question I take as two parts. One, yes, boards can always go back and revisit existing policies and determine whether or not they want to change those policies. The second part of your question is could they adopt a policy that contradicts an existing one? Presumably the answer would be no because the new policy would be the new policy, the old policy would be effectively nullified. So the question is, can the, this policy still stands? And the staff signed a contract in clear opposition to that. Isn't that making policy and isn't that not legal? I'm sorry, I've just been handed something that okay. was I'll, I'll a be fuller of explanation of it. So, just so I understand, this amends what is being read. Okay, I've uh, been handed by the clerk of the board This is September 10. The September 10, 2013 minutes where It appears that on an amendment by board member Stewart, what you are referring to now, or what you're referring to now has been amended. And this passed on September 10th of this year. Quote, authorize the expenditure of resources to expeditiously evaluate and prepare CRC related agreements terms and finance plan by amending PD 
dash zero one five, which I believe is the reference you made, to allow such expenses without adverse effects or excuse me, adverse impacts to system service levels, close quote, and resolve to present, quote, to the board as soon as possible the findings of this work and if needed, call a special meeting of the board to discuss these matters as time is of the essence, close quote. Can so, you tell us the page? Commissioner Stewart. Uh, I'm sorry. Page County 16 County of County. your packet. Council Member Smith. I mean, Freeman, excuse me. I was just asking where he was reading. Page 16. Middle of the page. Oh, yeah. Right there. So it sounds like that was done, that, that, that there was a policy change done on that day with that vote, so that the po policies can change, and that was right. done prior to the special meeting that was held on the 20. Correct. I'd like to have some clarification. So the policy no longer stands? That's what it appears from the, the legal counsel. I'd like to have some clarification. Uh, Commissioner Stewart, when you made that uh, motion and it got passed, were you, uh, we understood, at least I understood, that that was to, to uh, somehow get information and bring forward a, a uh, uh, staff report to us. Mm -hmm. um, that was the extent that I thought you were authorizing that. Did you intend for that to actually to just open the floodgates and allow all of the tax revenue <coughs> for CTRAN to fund this light rail project to the degree that it now has become? It appears that's the effect. He was asking what your intent was. Uh, this is, that, that's so the effect. I, the question is, so, that what, is that what you intended? So Commissioner Medora and I had this conversation last Wednesday, and I'll have it briefly uh, this evening. Um, when we're at the point where we're having a conversation and not an inquisition, then we will have a great conversation on this, but we are obviously not to that point, and I am not going to be uh, playing uh, into that uh, at this point. Do we have a resolution Chair. that we're getting Chair. to, or? Oh, yeah. You, we just had the resolution that was read. Um, There's no motion. Council Member Freeman. No, we have no motion on the floor. Mm -hmm. But discussion. Yes. Unless. Well, an inquisition. I mean, just in the kitchen we were talking about not taking things personally. And I just sat here this evening, and I was underlining your comments from uh, September 10th. And if I may, just take a moment. Uh, board members stu on page 15 of our of our minutes from our packet, I should say. Board member Stewart stated the goal of the resolution is to get the information to finalize the decade-long conversation in order to move forward. Chair Ganley said that he would like a moratorium on the entire CRC project. Uh, Stewart, uh, board member Stewart stated the project would not. Take a break until we get full information to be able to show the picture of what is, what was, and what is different. And then you turn the page, 17. Uh, board member Medore stated the board is getting ahead of the voters, which he opposes. And Stewart, board member Stewart stated, this is not rushing ahead, rather a meeting to discuss information. Rushing ahead would be if the board voted to move forward which was just done at our special meeting. We voted, and it was voted to move forward, and that's rushing ahead. So this is not an inquisition. This is just facts of where we thought we were heading when we held a meeting. We had a discussion about giving permission to the, board, uh, to the staff to investigate, to ask questions, to get information. That was the words used in the minutes on page 15 of our board packet. And we're way past that. This is not an inquisition. You are representing Clark County. Mm -hmm. and, you're represent and you're sitting on this board. And this is not an inquisition. This is a fair conversation. So, uh, like I said, I'm happy to have conversations, but I'm not going to answer questions about intent and go into all of that. Um, what you just read, absolutely, I said. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Can I, I just have a question for clarification to legal counsel, and I know we added this. Is that anywhere in the, uh, in the um, minutes or in the oral minutes of the motion that was made by Commissioner Stewart? Is there any place where that, you said that that policy was, I'm trying to find yes, it. Yes, it's on page 18? 16 of 16. your current board packet, and it is part of the September 10, 2013 minutes. 
It's the part in italics. It's easy to yes. pick out in the middle of that. There's no motion. Is there I'd like to make a motion. There you go. I'd like to make a motion to adopt this resolution. I second that. Okay. All those in favor say no, no, no discussion. 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 Yeah, I, I would think that this is a very important decision. And it's really, it would be so inappropriate for us to just say vote yes, vote no, and not, so, not somehow say something about why we're doing what we're doing. And so I think we, it would be a courtesy and really a responsibility if we're elected representatives accountable to the people, um, let people know what we're thinking. I'm, I'm thinking we gave our word. We made yeah. a commitment. It was a condition of approval. We set policy. Um, this is our integrity on the line. And if we're going to change that, it's not about the advantages and disadvantages of light rail. It had, or it, this has to do with, are we going to be good for a word? We never rescinded these things, not, not the way that you're now as, assuming that we did. So I'm going to vote yes on this, because this is our integrity on the line. Mr. Chair, call for question. Okay. Hand my hand up. Yes, go ahead, Roy. Oh, I'm sorry, Roy. Mr. Jennings. Sorry. I, question for legal. Have you gone through this to make sure that we would not be violating something? Gone through what? The resolution, resolution. that he just presented us. Let me read it. Just very quickly. Um, Are there any, I guess do you there, have any problems with it? Well, I think. From a legal standpoint. From a legal standpoint, I think there are um, some errors. We've just talked about them with regard to PD, uh, PBD-015. Um, if we are making a distinction between delegating authority with regard to policies versus delegating authority to execute contracts, I probably don't have a quarrel with that section. Uh, over in one of the whereases where it's describing the nature of the current contract, um, there are legal misstatements of both the contract as well as uh, the facts. So should so. we, can you? We can. It doesn't make recommendations. I understand no. that. I'm, and I'm, That's about I, I would like to have a clean. We can make corrections on correct this tonight. One that didn't have any errors in it if we're going to pass it. If it's going to be a binding So speaking document. against the resolution, if I might, Mr. Chair? Hey, yes. Speaking against the resolution, it is rife with inaccuracy, and it, is, uh, and it absolutely would constitute a breach of an agreement that we just struck. Uh, and I will certainly be voting no. I'll once again, call for question. A uh, call for question requires two-thirds vote, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. yep. In other words, to stop the conversation so that yes. we can't answer to the voters even why you're voting the way you're voting? Well, I feel like you're filibustering over there. I'm saying, I think it's answered. I'm just question. giving you an opportunity to just say yes, something. There's been a motion. And, and I motion. think and I agree uh, certainly take, with the uh, okay. We have a motion okay. to um, call for the question. We have a second. Uh, do, do we have to have a second on that? Yes, uh, to, to yes. call second. for the question. Second. Second. Okay, Fine. so clarification. Not no, not debatable. All those <laughs> just, in favor? Sir. If you say yes, you're saying it's stop the talk? Vote. Correct. Right. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Pose say nay. Nay. No. So that's three of us, Connie, okay. Joe, yourself, and You don't me. have two-thirds. You don't have two-thirds. Right. So therefore, continue. Okay. The vote continues. Okay, right. great. I, I do have a question. In fact, I do have a heads up. Uh, and it, it has the most problems are foreseeable. We have a train wreck in front of us. This agency is going to be suffer huge financial losses if we get this wrong. This cannot stand. We are violating our commitments. We're violating what we've written in as condition of approval to the biggest project in our history. So the, our responsibility, and I'll pass that to our legal counsel because you're our defense, is to give us some defense here. We have to be able to repeal this. If, if, if what happens, if, if, what I, if this is anything like Clackamas, 
this board's gonna have a different makeup in January. And it's gonna be a, a board that's gonna respect and honor what, we, what the previous board already decided to do. When that happens, we're gonna repeal this. When that happens, if, if we don't do this now, right after it was, it was signed without our knowledge, and right after it changed policy that we never rescinded, because there's other policies in here it never rescinded, we, uh, we're making this, uh, this agency not only liable for the $5 million, but you know yourself, because you've gone over this contract, there are no limits as to the liability of this organization that TriMet can claim before breach of contract. Is there a limit, sir? No, there's not. There will be at some point, yes. I mean, to say that there are... If, well, if I could have a moment to answer your question. Depending on if and when CTRAN breached this contract, TriMet would make claim for specified damages. No one in this room, including myself, has any way of knowing at what time that may occur, if it ever does, and what those damages would be that are being claimed. In other words, we don't know the, the, the limit. And you use the word breach. Let's welcome it. What I like to be able to use is the word repeal. Because there should have been a provision built into this contract, and you as our protector, as our defender, well, we I would think that you would put that in the contract, that you would allow us at the next board meeting to each, at least ratify it. You, we, we have been exposed. If I could. Is that in the resolution? Yeah. I know I can't. <laughs> if I could, Commissioner on the door. I think one of the things you're driving at is this contract does not contain what I would call a provision for termination of convenience by either one of the parties. I broached that subject in negotiation with TriMet when I received this contract at noon the Monday before our Thursday meeting. And I negotiated other clauses in this contract different than what TriMet had presented. I will tell you that my understanding from TriMet's response when I said, can we get a termination for convenience clause that will at specified times liquidate the amount that either party would have to pay to walk away from the agreement, that A, TriMet was not interested in negotiating such a clause, and B, TriMet said they did not have time to sit down and potentially determine what a liquidated sum might be for such a termination for convenience. Well, I would sure wish that you had had that conversation with this board, because you don't work for them, you work for us. Absolutely, I do. <laughs> so, Mr. Chair, um, and this is what we get, is the political grandstanding that's going on, speaking directly about elections and what's going to happen in elections in November. First of all, you don't know what's going to happen in elections. None of us does uh, as to what's going to happen in elections, no matter how much money you spend. So ultimately, for you to claim that you know about that, I think, is inappropriate. And for riling up the small mob that you have, uh, to be able to actually get them on it as well, I think is, uh, is something that you yourself have said in our meetings that we should strive to avoid. So I would ask you to please strive for the model that you, uh, that you speak to, please. Um, that's a, you make a good point. I do not know that this board is gonna have a different makeup. Um, I, I know it's a very good possibility, and that possibility is, is, carries with it the repeal of this contract. And if this board does not allow the patients to wait for the new board, what it, maybe it's going to be the same board, we don't know, to make some provision, at that point, we're, what, three months down the road. And at that time, enough time will have gone by where TriMet will have been uh, spent uh, uh, enough where there could be a valid claim for a lot of pr pretty substantial liquidated damages. But from the 26th until today, our, this is the first opportunity that we've seen the contract, that we've been able to actually talk about it. This is the opportunity for us to say, wait a minute, at least we need to ask for an opportunity to repeal it 
And even if you have to determine that, well, fix a certain amount that will cost us to get out of this contract in January, do something to leave a, a door open for us. I attempted to do that, Commissioner. Well, I'm asking you to do it now, uh, and I'll make a motion that, no, that we a ask our we have a motion on the, on the floor. And we okay, have a we'll wait till that motion gets finished. Are we on the motion, or are we just Motions doing a political approved. grand slam well, and this thing? This is the floor. He has the floor, mm -hmm. and therefore, but we do have. Well, let's talk on the motion. The then. motion. We're yes. Done. So, Good. okay, I will call for and unless any other discussion, I will call for roll call vote. Repeat the motion, please. The motion pass is the to pass the resolution that was presented by Does Commissioner Lador. I, I heard the whereas the last titled resolution. recognizing CTRAN board exclusive non That's recognizing CTRAN exclusive non uh, delegable authority That's non delegatable authority. policy making authority. Okay, uh, I will have the clerk call roll. I mean, call roll on this vote. Connie Joe Freeman, yes, Jeannie Harris, no, Jim Myers, no, Tim Levitt, no, David Medor, yes, Tom on the fifth layer no. step, no. Steve Stewart? No. Chair Ganley? Yes. Uh, Mr. Chair, motion. move to adjourn. Yes. Seconds. Okay. Move to adjourn. We did not. It's been moved okay. and seconded. Moved and second. Yes. All those in favor say aye. 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 Nay. Opposed say nay. 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 Okay. Adjourn. Yeah.